coming through. Um, originally, I had been asked to curate the show, and uh, I thought of artists that we have here today. Um, they're artists that I've seen a lot of their work, and I know them personally, and I really admire their work, uh, and just them as, uh, as friends as well. Um, I feel like a lot of our artwork deals with somewhat similar ideas. A lot of stuff about um, like location, like place, um, also about emotions and feelings that are held in that place, and sort of embodying a sense of memories and nostalgia that I think a lot of people could relate to, especially as Bay Area artists. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring all the artists up. And as the artists are having a seat, yeah. um, yeah. I'd like to, yeah. like to introduce <laughs> Katie Kwan. Um, she is a professor over at yeah. Texas State on yeah. um, the Asian American scene. And so we're really happy to have her be the moderator. She has some of her designs that she'll share with you later on. Um, you got it. Yeah, it is. Always go forward. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody wants to sit on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get in there, get in there. Sit on down. Yeah, have a, have a seat, squeeze in. You guys are so far away. Watch out for that Yeah, Oh, nice. Tommy Situation style with plastic on. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna uh, pass it over to Katie. Um, thank you for being here today, and thank you for um, inviting me to be the moderator. Um, and so, yeah, what we're gonna do is basically, I have a couple questions, and then we're just gonna start over here, and we're gonna go down the line. Okay. Um, so you get to go first. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, but yeah, so we're gonna just start off really easy. Um, can you introduce yourself and a little bit about what you do? What's up? Um, I am Todd the Human. If you've seen some of the stuff uh, for Todd the Bunny, I've created the bunny character. Um, and the character, uh, character character is named Rod. So it's Todd and Rod. And I just try to incorporate like fun, um, cartoon colors and fun stuff. <laughs> My name is Cameron, uh, Cameron Hadley, for anybody who hasn't met me before. Um, I'm a, a local artist in the Bay Area, really into painting, printmaking, all that. Uh, my name's Eric, Eric Look. Uh, my work is the one on the wall with all the squares and stuff. Um, I am also a San Francisco based painter and printmaker. I'm uh, Greg Shimada, and uh, I'm like a painter. I do murals, I do uh, graphic design. Uh, but yeah, my favorite thing about art is right now is just doing art shows and seeing like community people come together. It's great. I'm a super juice right now. So I agree with Greg. I'm Yuri, <laughs> and Ooh. I draw mostly, and I'm a storyteller through visuals, and that's where I can be raw as I can. So my name's Flash. Some people know me as Street Chili. Um, yeah, uh, San Francisco born and raised. I grew up in the Tenderloin. So I got into painting. I do a lot of like music related stuff now. So like I DJ and host events. Um, yeah. I'm Jacob. I'm uh, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jacob. I, uh, I moved to the Bay Area like five years ago. I like to, I've been painting mostly uh, abstract paintings. I try to, I'm trying to like match emotions that I feel, but I'm a little off, I guess. <laughs> You're not off. <laughs> well, thank you um, for introducing yourself and allowing everyone to kind of get a little bit of a gist of what um, we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna talk a little bit about art, we'll talk a little bit about identity, um, and hopefully this is a very low stakes kind of um, <laughs> A Q and A, so definitely don't feel um, too pressured to like be over the top, but you can if you want to be. Um, but yeah.
So we're going to start with a two-part question. Um, how did you get started in art? And the real question is, um, what inspired you to keep making art? Uh, I kind of grew up watching a bunch of like Saturday morning cartoons before like you know Infinite TV and cable and everything. So it's like program TV. Woke up on Saturdays and watched like just classic stuff, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was just like sometimes there wasn't even any dialogue. It was just like classical music to like you know kind of set the mood and give you an idea of a story. And I think as I, my parents watched it a lot, and I think it was because I think as immigrants and having that language barrier was kind of easy to watch a cartoon and get the humor and not have to speak the language and still understand it. And so I, I think early on I understood the power of like stories and how we can connect a little bit more to like characters than actual people. And I think that might have been just because I watched a lot of cartoons. Know, like Disney movies and just stuff that was like more imaginary. And it was somewhere somewhere I could go, like away from where I was at. And so it was kind of like, all right, if I can go somewhere, then I can maybe make something too. And I think that's what started to kind of get me to open up and bring my character, as opposed to like just drawing like comic book characters that everyone knows and is already familiar with. So I was just like, all right, well. Bugs Bunny and Roger Rabbit were probably two of my favorite characters, and I didn't even really <laughs> seek out to make like a bunny character, you know. So it was just fun to incorporate like those influences, like even with like Calvin and Hobbes and Dennis the Menace, just those kind of outsider characters that were not, you know, they're up to like a little mischief and you know maybe no good, but it was like still like fun and games, you know. So yeah, cartoons were a big inspiration. What keeps you doing art? I guess now it's like um, after sharing some some of my art and then connecting to people within like just like homies through music or skate community or just being in the city. It was like all right, like now I have a more directional purpose to kind of keep sharing those stories and keep I don't know saying things that maybe would be hard for me to say, but easier for me to convey through like a painting or a drawing. And so, especially as like a person still figuring out identity wise, like who, what it means to be like, you know, for me, I'm like first born generation, like a Korean. So it was living in like 1950s Korea at home and you come out and it's like the modern day America. And so it was like this dual identity. So it was easy for me to create like a character to mask something and, and give me a place to like vocalize things I couldn't you know and so now like my homies and my family like support me to keep or inspired me to keep like doing what I do. Yeah I think for me um where, where did I start? I, uh, I started drawing when I was really young um yeah I think it was a way for me to sort of focus in on a task and kind of calm my mind. And also, like uh, Todd said, to sort of put down ideas that I didn't necessarily know I was thinking about, and sort of on the subconscious level. Uh, yeah, so, this is a uh, painting or drawing that I did when I was a little kid, but every time, it's at the our home apartment. But every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, I was like, I can kind of see different layers of what I was going through. But at the time, I didn't really know what it was I was creating. I was just trying to explain what I was going through through the medium that was the most easy to me at the time. Uh, I think for, um, as far as staying inspired, uh, it's kind of related to the original thing I was saying. Um, I think I, I've been very busy recently, uh, so it's kind of difficult to slow down and whenever I can get the chance to slow down and just draw something and just doodle and try to be in that moment without thinking about a bunch of other stuff and just focus in on just one simple small task that kind of builds and builds and it kind of it helps me feel a little bit more confident in my own 
feelings and my own drawing skills. Um, but uh, yeah, things like this definitely help uh, help push that as well. <laughs> how yeah, how did you? Sorry, oh, yeah. I'm already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I was thinking too. I'm trying to focus around. in on what you guys are saying too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm trying to. Can you repeat it one more time? Yeah, uh, basically your origin story and what keeps inspiring you. Origin story. I'm also uh, born and raised in San Francisco. Um, I think a lot of what informed my art process was, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have two Asian parents who don't really confine, I don't want to say the stereotype, but the kind of the typical, maybe like not super supportive of art and not super supportive of that kind of thing. Um, so they were always kind of the opposite. They were always really supportive of whatever I wanted to do, but also they never really forced me to do anything and sort of just let me arrive at my own conclusions and figure out if I wanted to paint or if I wanted to draw, that's something I wanted to do for myself. And um, I think a lot of actually what got me interested in art at an early age was my dad and his dad are both architects. And um, when I was younger, I really wanted to be an architect as well. And even uh, throughout like high school and stuff, I did a lot of uh, architecture programs and studied with my family a lot. And um, I always loved drawing buildings and creating these uh, spaces for people, but I never was able to get the math and sort of more, less artistic side of it. So I think when I went off to college and initially focused more in printmaking more so than painting, I sort of reignited my interest in that kind of imagery and those kinds of things. And then instead of trying to do architecture, make things that are physical structures, just taking the beauty of what I can find in that and translating it into painting. And then that would tie in with the second part of the question being that, I mean, what keeps me going now to paint is really, it's really for myself more than anybody. I mean, of course I love showing my paintings and I love having a platform to express my art and that's a huge deal to me and I'm extremely grateful for this. But um, at the end of the day, it's really, it, I wouldn't do it if it didn't do something for me. And what it does for me is it's, it's therapeutic for me, it makes me happy and it's a lot of it is, the hardest part about, and what I was nervous about with this talk, is a lot of it is not really quantifiable and not something that's easy for me to verbalize. And that's why I use painting, and that's the tool I use painting for. And that it's my way of expressing my emotions that I can't articulate verbally or any other way. <laughs> I was talking with my mom recently. I, I didn't know this. I kind of remember, but I, don't, I didn't know till adulthood that I would draw before I like even could write or talk. So I guess that was my first communication. I'm like, I would see letters and numbers and maps, and I would just draw them, like duplicate them. And so that kind of became, I guess, something that was already embedded in me before I even learned language or any other form of communication um, and then as I kind of grew older like I guess hard times growing up with my parents divorcing was like a coping mechanism that I, I learned to like be like oh I have this world that's like chaotic but then I have this world that I can just make whatever I want to make and I would just continue to build the skills that I have today drawing was my, you know, genesis of art. And then the drawing, I learned how to do painting, graffiti, design. Everything started for me just having a, a little notebook on me at all times. And uh, I guess, yeah, expressing my feelings in that way. Um, the why I continue to do it is the picture that I get when I'm finished with it, I get so obsessed with it. I take a photo and I just get really obsessed with it and like look at it all the time afterwards because I'm so happy that the, the final product is done. No matter what it is, I just am like super proud of it. But then I also get really, I guess like kind of addicted to the feeling of showing other people and they're like getting 
their reaction and kind of like being psychic to their feeling of how they, if they're like excited I get like that's like my favorite emotion like I can feel how they feel when they see the image as well and that's continually pushes me to be a better artist and be a better I guess communicator in that way. So I started drawing since before I can remember <clears throat> but if I were to guess why I started because I grew up a lot of nose, because I grew up Asian, Asian ass parents, like Korean ass parents, like straight from Korea, like they said, no this, no boys, no this, like you're gonna get pregnant, you <laughs> stay out after six, like, so it was my way of saying yes, like I can do whatever the hell I want on paper, no one can tell me what to do, and it's true, like I think that's why I still continued, because like if I was truly myself at work, I'd get fired, you know what I mean, like you still have to be like, <laughs> like you still have to be like, oh hi, how's it going, you know, yeah, most of all of us, so it's like paper, and drawing for me was the way I can create my own world, my rules, and still like communicate and relate to people. It helps me sleep at night. Like sure, I could have been like a lawyer or a doctor, but like what would that do for me? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I'd have money, that's nice. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, but like drawing is what helps me sleep at night. And there's no feeling like finishing a drawing and looking at it and be like, I made this. Like, this is like Gary's world. It's like being selfish in a healthy way. Yeah. If that makes sense, yes. you know, it's no like, problem with being selfish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> especially in your thirties, you know. Uh, but, uh, I feel it. Yeah, no more twenties. Um, no more pleasing people. No, but um, <laughs> no, but it's like a healthy balance of like relating to people, but also just staying true to yourself and relating to yourself. So that's why I continue because I'm gonna do it till I die, because that's the best feeling in the world is getting to know yourself. And when you get to know yourself, you can be better with your friends, people around you, and like create more like understanding and like talk to people that don't look like you, talk to people that like aren't like you, you know? And I feel like drawing is where it, it takes me. And like, I've had all kinds of people tell me, like one time I did a, like one opening this girl like saw this drawing and she started talking about her like time when she did porn and I was like, whoa, like I don't even know you for an, like less than an hour and you're already sharing this. And like, that's the vulnerability of art. Like that's the power of art. And that's why like I get to know people in ways that are really like Great and raw. Woo. Nice. Uh, yeah, so very similarly to everyone here, uh, I got started at a very young age. Before I could remember, I was doing art in some form. Uh, started dabbling in painting and drawing and things like that. Transitioned into music, uh, I think very similarly to what's been said already. Um, I got very hyped on like how people might feel, especially with, when it comes to music, like we we'll find a track and I'm just like, hell yeah, this shit's sick. Like, I can't wait to drop this, you know? And like, I know how the I know how people are gonna feel about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and also like the way it brings community together, you know, a lot of people here, you know, I'm sure a lot of people in the crowd don't really know each other. Some people do, you know, maybe long time friends that haven't seen each other in a long time. Like, that's the beauty, like, like you were saying, it transcends a lot of boundaries that are placed upon us within society you know like all types of art whether it be like you know there's a physical medium or uh something that is transcendental from that like like music so yeah that's what keeps me going i definitely started drawing like heavily when i was, <coughs> when i went to school and like it's because uh, I just didn't want to pay attention in school, so I kind of used it as advice to get me through the day. And then um, I kind of, in high school, I started using it like in kind of like a political way, sort of. And I kind of, I don't know, it was almost like me like lashing out in a kind of way. But um, then in recent years, I just found that uh, um, I, I just like painting. It's, it's like very therapeutic for me. That's what I get to do. Yeah. Nice. Um, cool. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> seen here that everyone's super super like this is a really friendly and uh inviting audience so you all have nothing to worry about this right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so far so good yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Give it to um but so far i mean we there's a lot of common themes that i've seen um, a lot of escapism a lot of 
uh, communication, a lot of therapy in a lot of ways, that, like that's how art is. Um, and so why don't you take us through what that process looks like? How would you describe your process of going through your art? How do you get the idea? What are some things that maybe inspire it? And then how do you end up at that final product? Um, I guess if you think about like the cartoon world, you know, it's like really fun. You know, there's things that can happen that obviously can't happen in like our reality. And so I like to play with that because just as much as you have like set rules here, it's like there's so much, somewhat like set rules there. It's almost like everything else that doesn't go here does there, right? So you see, I don't know, like why the coyote blow up from like a rocket trying to go like fast chasing the roadrunner, you know, and then he's in the next scene, he's in the next episode, like, and so I think there's like an invincibility in, in like the comic cartoon world that I always like enjoyed and, you know, for the most part it was like something based off of like real events, you know, so it's like Spider-Man, it's like, you know, his Uncle Ben dies and there's like this story from that and so I, I always wanted to create a world where like it'd be just like fun to be at like it'd be fun to be able to I don't know just like put a strap something on your skateboard so you can like go really fast you know or draw like a hole in the ground and now you got like a little escape tunnel and you can get out of whatever situation you're in so I guess most of my art was just based on like creating like pulling, you know, stuff from the real world and then making it like in the cartoon world. So like, uh, stuff like Roger Rabbit really like blew my mind, or even like the, the, the first like Ninja Turtles movie. I was like, yo, like that could really be. You know, why not? You know. And so it just started from asking that question, like, what would be like more fun to see instead of like a boring like utility box or just like a regular wall. It's like, alright, let me put like fun character, it's a funny expression, or sometimes even just one phrase or something that we all think of, you know, and so it's like letting me say the stuff I, I didn't want to say, like, as a person, but like, you know, you can't get mad at, like, this bunny saying this thing, you know, so it kind of gave me this, like, platform to just kind of be myself that way, because it was like, I didn't know how to, how to do that, you know, and so uh, it eventually, like, the, the acronym came later to like trust over doubt. It was the, the idea of like putting more meaning behind the things that I was doing too, that I was like uncovering more like meaning in my life. So I was like, all right, like the only way I could just stay true to myself is kind of like what Eric was saying, like doing the things that I want to do for myself, but like it's, it, it's, it's hard to do that, right? And so we have this veil of paint or this veil of music or dance or skating or whatever it might be. And it's like, or um, even lighting for a, a theater. Like, there's just so many aspects of our everyday where we're like, it's so embedded in our everyday that we look at art as being just like thing on a wall, but it's like, it's, I don't know, it's like how you walk across the street, it's like, you know, it's, it's how you see the world, you know, more than anything. And I think as artists, the, the early like advantage we had in some ways was seeing the world like for really what it was, you know? And so with that, we were able to see other things too, right? Like that that's how we're able to draw and paint the, the stuff that you see now. Like it's because it wasn't there before. It was something that we saw, you know? And so I think putting it out that way and then sharing like my view that way, you know? It's like, it's hard to say like, this is what I think, but instead I'll just say it with this color or with this like, painting, you know, like, <laughs> and a lot of pain goes into painting, right, because it's like, it's from that place of, um, I don't know, like, I want something better than I'm seeing, right, and so we, we build that, we, we create that. Uh, I, I think my, for my own process has often been sort of, um, uh, how do I use it? I think often I at times I overthink things a lot. I don't know if anybody else feels that way too, but uh, and, and that'll kind of keep me from starting somewhere, you know. And like sometimes starting is like the hardest part, 
especially if you have some big blank canvas. Um, so for me, my process has just been getting a coat on, just like put a layer down and then just sort of start drawing something that's around me or something that connects to an emotion that I have. And then I just continue to build on that. And just, I just sort of feel like, oh, this would be, looks right, right here. Maybe something pouring out, maybe some other colors right here. And I just keep building on the original idea I have and trying to make it a little bit more interesting by layering. But I do think that once those layers have accumulated, when I step back, it kind of has a different, um, it has a different like articulation than what I originally intended to happen, which is something that I really enjoy about art making is like going through the process and letting the process kind of inform what the final product is going to be or what the final image is going to look like. So yeah, just trying to go with it and keep that momentum. Definitely helps. That's a really tough question. Um, why? I mean, I think even the question of process harkens back more so to like why we even choose to make art in the first place. I think that's a lot of what comes up in my work at least. Um, and that, I don't know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's, <laughs> my paintings are really like uh, a visual articulation of how I feel and how I learn and understand and process my environment around me. So some of them are still lifes and some of them are abstract squares, but they're all kind of like, it sounds cheesy, but they're all screenshots into my brain and how I'm seeing things how I process things around me. And then I think on top of that, or in tandem with that, um, it asks myself and I guess the viewer, um, like why choose to paint the things we paint in the first place, especially in the day and age of being able to photograph something or even being able to digitally recreate something with like AI drawing instead of just painting it out. Um, and I think I don't know, that's not really a very helpful answer, I feel like, but yeah, just, I mean, the, the idea of, because I, a lot of the times when I was younger too, I was told to only paint from life and never paint from photos and draw and paint from life. And I paint from a lot of photos now. And um, I think it's interesting because I think it starts to ask the question and create the dialogue of, well, why do we even paint these things in the first place? And then that kind of places the rest of the question process <clears throat> can be a, a bunch of different ways how I think about getting inspiration I mean I hate to even say like I go on the internet I'm like downloading tens of thousands of images all the time and I my brain starts to get to thinking like oh I could do this differently I could recreate this photo you know of the Denny's that used to be in Japantown like just having the conversation with Cameron seeing him I was like, oh, that'd be perfect for this show. I need to recreate this memory I have that's no longer in the physical form. It's, there's not many photos on the internet anymore either. So now I'm recreating a memory in the real world. Um, I'll get really intense and paint for a couple days and then I'll get fried and I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk around San Francisco and San Francisco always has so much inspiration for me. Science, fashion, you know, architecture, every everything. So there, I can pull from anywhere, the internet, real life, imagination, or, uh, you know, it's me getting an idea and then kind of trying to tweak it to why I would paint it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, how my thought process comes to starting a painting. Hi. Um, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Um, process. I mean, I'm a very chaotic person, and I feel like the only way that's going to work is if I have trust in myself. Like, when is this done? When is it not done? But it always starts with an idea, or like an emotion, or I'm angry, or whatever. And I feel like it's just like life. Like, you just start with, what, like, going to the grocery store, you don't know what you're going to make, but you get, like, flour, and you're like, alright, I'm going to make pancakes, I'm going to make bacon soda, and banana, and all that shit. 
So you just gotta like, you just start with the line and the an idea, and then it's just like a mix between spontaneity and also like with the plan. I think being open to like where it's gonna go is where the book gets really interesting. You're like, oh shit, I want all red here, and you're like, wait, that looks like shit, so I'm gonna do yellow here instead. And um, it's just like about trust, and it's basically just like talking to myself for a long time. <laughs> so you go a little crazy, you know? But. <laughs> Um, but I think that's my process that I have my dad's genes where like he's chaotic, goes wherever he wants to go. And I have my mom's genes where I'm very organized, so I like utilize both. And it creates all those pieces you see back there. <laughs> so just accepting yourself is a big part of the process. To be honest. Uh, yeah, inspiration for me, I haven't painted in a while. So I think I. I used to like use it as a way, like everyone said, like to convey different emotions or like ideas in my head that uh, I hadn't fully processed or like really realized like what has happened. Uh, I was in a rut like right before like pandemic and like all throughout the pandemic trying to do art, but like not feeling satisfied or uh, fulfilled with the work that I was doing. So uh, I've always been a fan of music, like all types of art forms, but like has always played a role in my life. Um, I feel like DJing has become a little more accessible for a lot of people. Um, so I feel like that's a way that I can like still communicate those feelings or like get out whatever I have to say. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm going to repeat some of the stuff you guys said, but uh, for me it's more if I'm like feeling overwhelmed with some type of emotion and try to start there and then um, kind of just like what you guys said like uh, part of it is starting and then you gotta figure it out like in the middle and like be up for whatever happens with it and, uh, the trusting the process yeah mm -hmm. process. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> basically describe okay. your art process okay mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah I guess that's, that's pretty much I feel like everybody's response was very uh, kind of abstract, kind of meta. It felt very much like what an artist would say. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like everywhere. Um, which does lead me to sort of wonder um, when, when, because the term artist is already such a loaded term in a lot of ways, and when you think of it, like people have uh, ideas of what an artist is and who, what kind of person. Um, like the personality of an artist and whatnot, when do you consider yourself as an artist and took on the title? <laughs> okay. I don't know, so I, I kind of hate any kind of like, sing, you know, single thing because it's like there's not room to budge if you say one thing or the other, especially now it's like you have a broader understanding of like the different things that can be, you know, before, like, especially when I was a kid, it was like, like, Korean American, right, there's this, like, separation, and it's like, I feel like the more, you know, parts you put together, it's like, it becomes the whole, you know, like, I, I, like, Flash was saying, I love music, I love dance, um, you know, a lot, a lot of my early inspiration is just getting familiar with what was happening at the time, you know, and so, I, don't know, I think the idea of being more of like a, I guess like a, a student in some ways, you know, like I, I studied like skating, I studied painting, I studied like just different aspects of my curiosities. And so I think that's when I started to understand like it's not so different. Like my, I have some buddies that are Dope chef, you know, and like viewing it through the lens of like artistry, it's like what then isn't really art, you know, what, like what we do every day, you know, like like getting up and and trying to like embrace everything happening every every day, like that's an art to, to live, you know, that we all kind of do automatically, and so doing something out of that ordinary, I think, thing 
and, and, and taking the time, I think, to create something, even if it's like something small, like an intimate that only a handful of people might experience or can really connect to, it's like, what more do we need to do besides like that, whether it's through like dance or, or painting or singing, or, you know, like it, it's each thing kind of inspires and feeds each other. And I think it grows from there. Like civilizations, like are built on the things that like artists and the creators and builders like leave behind. You know, and it's the stories that we kind of connect and share together. I think I agree with what you're saying as far as like it's kind of hard to like say like oh I'm I'm an artist or whatever. <laughs> I think often I do have some a little bit of imposter syndrome uh, when it comes to that. Yeah, that's it. Um, as I feel like a lot of people do in different parts of our lives, you know. Um, I think as far as being like an artist or calling myself an artist, I would say maybe like like some of the first pieces I sold, then then it's like technically you're getting paid for it. I don't know. It's kind of a hard, it's kind of a gray area, I don't know. But I mean, like you said, everybody is an artist in their own right. And uh, I think for me, um, I think maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because when I think back, you know, I would tell that little version of me, like, you're an artist. Like, you're doing it. You're already doing it. Like, as soon as you put that pen to paper, you're already doing it. So I think just to everybody, like, you're already doing it, just trust yourself and just keep rolling with it. Don't overthink the labels too much and just keep doing what you feel, you know, Feels right. And what makes you happy? You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, believe it, man. Believe it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I'm gonna echo what Seth Smith did, both Todd and Cam said, in that um, I, I don't, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but um, I, I completely agree in that I think everybody is an artist in their own way, and that's like, I don't know, it's so like cheesy and like it's such a like a broad statement, but I really do think it applies, and I really do think it has a lot of merit to it, too, just that just because it sounds kind of corny or whatever doesn't, um, I don't think that takes away it from anything from it. Um, I would definitely, like they said, like, I, I think a younger version of myself would be really intimidated to call myself an artist and say, oh, well, I haven't accomplished X, Y, Z, I haven't sold a painting, I haven't made this or that of how I like, but um, current... 28 year old me would argue that again anybody is an artist and I don't know I always think it's so funny when people come to shows or look at painting and say oh I wish I could do that I never I don't I just don't have it in me and I, I you know I don't I don't see things that way and it's so cool that you can paint and I'm like I, I, I really don't think one person's art or artistic expression has any more or less merit than the next person's and just because you don't have any sort of traditional training or anything like that or even if you don't do art at all the fact that you would want to translate an image in any way from one thing to another is interesting in itself and I think me personally I'm fascinated by everybody's experiences so I find it um, not funny but when people say things like that I'm like, I always encourage them well just put a pad or a paintbrush to canvas or paper and see what happens because um, I mean I wouldn't think anybody's would be interested in my art, and we're here now, so, yeah, so it's like, um, yeah, everybody's an artist, don't, again, don't worry too much about the labels, and, yeah. I agree, I think art, I think art is a confidence game, it's not about the label, it's not about uh, what other people think about you, it's more about what energy you put out into the world when you show art, or when you make art. It's more about your focus on how you feel. And I've always, yeah, like even as a kid, third grade, like what's your dream job? Like artist, I'm like, I'm an artist already. You know, like I'm nine, you know? So I always had that insight with people's encouragement, without people's encouragement to pursue this career. And I, yeah, it's always been comfortable for me to just say, yeah, that's, that's what I do. Like, it's the best thing I can do. And that's what I'm gonna show everybody. So. Is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I were to, I think the reason 
why I call myself an artist is because I'm most obsessed with it. Like that's the most thing I'm obsessed with. Like yeah, I cook all the time. I wouldn't call myself a chef because I'm not. Like only homies gonna eat this. You know what I mean? It's like it's not like I'm sharing it out there. But art is just like for some reason like the most I'm invested in, the most I want to like talk about. That's like what I'll do till I die. Like I said earlier, it's like I think that's why I consider myself an artist because I'm like growing with that. I mean, yeah, I get obsessed with recipes and shit. But I'm not like trying to bring it out there. It's more intimate for me. But art is like a very, it's like the bridge to everyone out there. So it's just obsession for me. Or <laughs> what I'm like, it's what I'm gonna do after work, before work. I'm thinking about it all the time. That's how I'm an artist. Uh, yeah, very similarly, like, I have a hard time saying that about myself. Uh, I think, like, due to social media and, like, how the world works now, there's a lot of questions around, like, authenticity, like, what's sick, what's not. Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, similar to, like, what Greg was saying, like, it's just a confidence game. Like, I also, like, do a lot of shit. <laughs> I, like, don't <laughs> want to pigeonhole myself. Uh, so, like, I want to explore what it means to me. People that work at Subway are sandwich artists, you know, like, yeah. they're more artists, you know, like, yeah. that's the official label, that's so facts. everyone's more artists than us. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely everybody's an artist, but like, I feel like everybody specializes in like one medium, like, that they can communicate best in, and I feel like, I don't know how I want to consider myself an artist, but like, I feel like that's definitely the best way I can Well, I think much we're way ahead because um, I do want to leave a little bit of space for Q and A's for anybody who uh, wants to ask a question. So we do have two more questions that we're gonna just jump right into. Um, one, so this is kind of like the first part. It's like a two-part question. The one part's more practical than the other. The other one's more about your art. Um, but see now we're all in the Bay Area. The Bay is getting more and more expensive and art is getting more and more commodified and saturated in some ways as well. So part one of the question is, how do you survive with your art or, or I guess outside of art as well? Um, and how do you bring authenticity to your work? I guess survival is just, you know, sometimes you gotta do whatever you can, especially as someone living in the Bay and living in the city, it's like, you do, uh, I had to like expand my kind of arsenal of creative, um, whatever, enterprises, so it's like, you know, I think you start painting, but then it's like, all right, well, maybe I can design stuff, maybe I can, so you kind of branch out and do different stuff. And so for me, it was like getting access to do like mural work, um, collaborating with like local brands, buddies that need like design work, um, and just expanding like within the kind of creative, visual, like arts realm. And it's pushed me to like also like approach my work differently. Because then when, once you start working with other people and you start having like clients and building relationships you start to just expand your mind and then you expand your experience just just from doing it you know and so um, I've been fortunate enough, enough to be able to like work with like just people in the city people in the bay um, that have like seen my work and then like my personal work and then just from that being able to connect to to do work with um, like collaborative work or, or some kind of design work. So, um, I think that was the first part. Yeah, the second part is how do you keep authentic or how do you bring authenticity to your work? And so, yeah, I mean, that that's the big thing, right? So, when you're doing, especially if it's like client work or collaborative work, it's like, you know, it's not just about your idea at that point. So, it's like, how much of me do I insert and immerse? And I think that was like a learning curve for me. Um, as far as like, is this job going to be something where I'm like doing exactly what they want, 
or is it something that they came to me specifically for? And nine times out of ten, it's towards the, the second one. And so that makes me want to like, all right, like, kind of makes me try harder in some ways, you know, because it's like, all right, now I'm putting, you know, part of something that I've made to make this thing, or putting something more of my personal touch to it. Um, you know, if you have an idea or something that comes to me with it, like, I still do 100%, but it's like the idea of something collaborative and building something more, like, not just for like a quick, like, transactional um, thing. I think that's how it's, I keep it authentic for me. Because, um, you know, sometimes you do design work that's not towards dollars, you know, like, sometimes it comes down to, like, exchanging energy and exchanging, like, that collaborative creative process and then uncovering like whoa like you know this project led to this project or you know there's so many instances where it's just like you know someone sees your work from a project that you did just because you wanted to you know like cause there's some projects that you can get paid and you know wouldn't, couldn't pay me like double to do it again you know it's like it's just the reality of like certain jobs it's just so difficult to like like oh this is the thing that I want to keep doing so you know whether it's like making I don't know putting events together or you know just doing video editing or just you know anything that'll kind of get my hands into whatever kind of keep going. <laughs> As we all know, it's not easy living in the Bay Area. Uh, and yeah, definitely been very busy with her. Uh, and uh, to build off of what you're talking about, I think it's hard for a lot of people that work regular nine to five jobs to like see artists as like working because a lot of times you're like, you know, there's a lot of time chilling or like conversing with different people and just being there and being open and showing your work and just creating your work, like you're not getting paid to do all of that, you know? That's all the stuff that you just have to do to network and to just build your community and keep building on your community. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, come here, come here. Uh, but yeah. So I do multiple jobs, <laughs> work multiple jobs, doing multiple different things, you know, just gotta hustle, keep keep moving, and uh, yeah, figure things out as you go. Um, as in the second part of the question was authenticity. In order to, uh, one thing that Greg was saying that I kinda wanna build on is, um, like, like how you said it's a confidence game, it really is about I mean, it, it's kind of, I, it, I've had trouble being like an artist because uh, you're really, you're selling yourself. Like anyone could take a picture, print all this stuff out, you know, but, but it's not, the fact that you yourself as a person put a brush stroke onto something or something like that, it's like a, a certain embodied physicality that is like, isn't really, the same with all the digital uh, materials um, and the fact that you can feel some of the par parts of the artwork or you can see certain parts of it of uh, parts of the image building process like you know like a little pencil mark or a little like brushstroke that gets a little chunky or something like that maybe something that wasn't supposed to be there that the artist kind of just went with it's it, it kind of embodies the artist in a way and in that sense that we are the product in some ways, which is like hard to like say <laughs> and like think about, but really that's, yeah. Being yourself, showing, being vulnerable, that's what people connect to. And through that, they can connect to your heart. Um, so to start with the first part of the question being, um, how do I support and sustain myself? That's a hard one. Um, 
it's not easy, and uh, but and um, I barely do sustain myself. But um, at the end of the day, I would still rather have it that way than any other way, and I'd still rather kind of struggle or not struggle, but you know, not live in luxury and have but have the luxury of being able to do what I want for a living, or at least for somewhat of a stable income. And um, I don't know, I think that's just, that's always what's been the most important to me out of everything. I mean, even art and everything aside, it's just what I want to do. And um, I mean, I guess for a more practical answer to that question would be freelance painting and graphic design and stuff for people, which I feel like is a pretty common sentiment around the panel. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's more like, how do I sustain my art? Like, the art doesn't sustain me at all. But, right? I'd, I'd like it to, but it doesn't as much as it should. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, again, I still, wouldn't, I still wouldn't do it any other way. And um, so the second part of the question of authenticity, um, that's also a really, these are good questions. Um, that's a, it's a really multifaceted word. And I mean, there's a lot of different things that come into people's heads when it comes to authenticity with art and outside of art. Um, and this might be kind of a tangent, but I guess this sort of ties into another theme of the show, which is obviously our Asian American art and experiences Asian American people making art, making work. And um, in that sense of the word authentic, I think that's an interesting discussion to have in the context of this show. Because um, me personally, at least, like going through a lot of art school and stuff and making the kind of art I do, I've definitely encountered a lot of critique like, oh, well, since you're Asian, your art should touch on that more, and it should be more about uh, your experiences being Chinese American or Vietnamese American, and you know, why aren't you painting Chinese flags or literal imagery? And it's like, this is something I talked to Cameron about too before we got the show started, and something I was so happy that he reached out to me and everybody in the show in that it didn't feel like, it's an Asian American art show, but it didn't feel like he's reaching out and saying, oh, make art about being Asian, because something we've talked about, and something I really wanted to harp on, um, is that I think all of our art is inherently authentic in as Asian Americans and our voices and experiences, because, you know, just because we're not making paintings of the scenes of China or scenes of Asia, like, anything we may, we could draw a bowl from a still life of just whatever we're looking at and it would still be inherently Asian art because we're Asian and that's the our voice and what we do to express. <laughs> yeah, we make art. Yeah, exactly. We'll box us in. <laughs> Sustain. So my my advice I give every artist that changed my perspective on how to make art is I made the leap from part time job to Get in the studio, investing in yourself like you're a corporation, like you're a business, just you, and having a space for you to <coughs> make money, make art, make connections, business, all, all those things. And that's when my trajectory of artists completely changed, where I think the art gods were like, okay, he's taking it serious now and he wants it to be real. So once I put that money in, I got the money back and I made money and I sustained myself from that. It's a constant refresh of that kind of stuff where I'm buying stuff to, you know, print t-shirts, make more money from that. And to keep it authentic, I try to suffer sometimes, like walk <laughs> along, I'll walk a lot, like walk to I'm like hurting or break the law or do something, <laughs> do something uh, spicy to not just be a regular <laughs> artist, and, you know? And, uh, you know, be, be uh, you know, against the government, against the norm, society norm. So that's what I always take from that and put into the art for authenticity, I guess, is pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so to pay the bills, I work at a full-time job. I always, I actually, we talked about this earlier, Katie, is that I always feel like I work two full-time jobs because I need to pay the bills, they are expensive as fuck. So um, I just feel like I have to make sure the job I have doesn't hinder me from making work. Like I used to work at a Whole Foods and I used to like had to cut like five pounds of potatoes 
And I would come home and I couldn't draw because my wrist would shake. And I was like, nah, I can't do this. Like, so now we're in a nonprofit at this desk job, which is boring, excels, hell, whatever. But I mean, it pays my bills and my bosses gives me work-life balance. And to keep it authentic is I tell myself, don't be swayed by shit. Like if, yeah, you, I can draw the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, I can draw celebrities and make them bank off that shit. Do I really want to do that? No, I don't. Like I want to make what I want to make. I want to speak on what I want to speak. I'm going to speak for myself. And I always keep it that way to do me and like to do you too. And that like goes for everyone. It's like, if you want to make work, like just because someone says you got to censor it. Like a lot of people try to censor me and I don't agree with that, unless I'm being like an asshole. But <laughs> yeah. like other than that, it's like, it I'm gonna draw intense crazy shit. I'm gonna draw spooky as shit. And like, even when I do commissions, I always do like a sniffing period. And I'm like, hey, like this is what you're gonna get. I'm not gonna draw Disney characters for you. <laughs> I'm not gonna draw like, like the worst is like when you get a commission, they're like, can you draw like this artist? Or can you draw like, it's like, no, hire that artist. <laughs> you know, so don't be swayed by shit. And that's how I keep myself being authentic is this is me and this is what you're gonna get and that's okay I'm not for everyone not everyone's for everyone and if you are you're boring so that's <laughs> 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 uh, regarding like sustenance I think like sustenance, sustenance. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, like you can view it in many different ways like you can be wealthy like with all the relationships you hold and I think that also ties into authenticity mm -hmm. like I do my best to present myself as myself, you know, and like not try and fit a mold. Uh, and like everyone that I know and meet, and like they do the same thing for the most part. So uh, meeting similar people who like don't want to like hide behind a label or hide behind a certain like demographic or socially contrived image of them. Uh, and then also like part of like being your most authentic self is like being an authentic listener. And like listening to people's stories and like really like trying to honor that as well and like take that into account. Uh, so yeah. I just uh, to sustain myself. I just I work like a couple jobs, like one part time job and a full time job. And uh, <clears throat> they're both kind of art related, but then I do that so I can like I mostly just paint on the weekends. Like, I guess I kind of take like the whole like suffering from working all the time and try to like, uh, let it out I guess in a way and, um, I feel like if uh, you're making art for yourself uh, chances are it'll help other people with whatever they're going through mm -hmm. yeah. there's a lot of suffering for your art <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, we have our final question, and this one's, the, hopefully this is the easiest one out of all of them, which is, um, what are your current projects and how can people support you? Uh, I got a couple different things coming up. Uh, doing this uh, Sucker Fleet Market and the Mission. Uh, it's going to be a bunch of like local artists and vendors. That'll be the first one, like of um, many monthly like things that happen over that city station like parking lot. So if you guys haven't been over there, check that out. Um, but yeah, if you have like I don't know social media and stuff, that's where I usually post on my stuff and keep up to date there. Um, right now I guess mostly just studio again. The space we have here, uh, Leela and Wong will be the next. Um, artist that we have. Uh, for anyone who doesn't already know, he, he's did, uh, he's done well, he does screen printing amongst other forms of art as well. Um, but he's done like the posters for many many years for Cherry Blossom. Uh, so that would be good. To, uh, he will also do an artist Q and A with him as well. So it'll be interesting to hear some stories and get to see a bunch of the, his art and uh, possibly some of his friends' art as well. Um, and then as far as my own practice, um, I made some prints, some screen prints, I, very DIY, just 
I was using post-it notes to like as a clamp to like press it down and get it done. <laughs> but they're in the other room, so if anyone wants to buy some prints, uh, or if anyone would like to purchase some art, that would uh, help us out greatly. And also, we're planning to do some workshops, uh, so stay tuned, and uh, hopefully we'll do like a paint night or something. So if people would be down for that, stay tuned, and uh, we'll hopefully continue to build this community and build this space up, and you know, get to host uh, local artists and uh, yeah, keep it going. Ton, but um, I'm just trying to stay focused and after big shows like this and having a deadline shows like this for me are super helpful because oftentimes without a deadline I find myself not not making work but um, just finding it hard to find the motivation and just to say oh I could I could paint tomorrow I could paint the next day I could paint the next day and then the next day never comes and it's been a while. but um, just trying to keep myself occupied and make sure to keep painting, but also to remember to keep painting for myself and keep painting because I'm painting things that I want to paint and painting things that bring me satisfaction, not even necessarily with the intent of sharing them or anything. Not that I don't want to, but um, to keep in mind that at the end of the day, I'm painting because it gives me some sort of happiness and I just want to keep that going in my practice however I can. And then in terms of support, um, I can't really ask for anything more than this. This is, a, I really appreciate all you guys coming out and um, just taking an interest in the art at all. Obviously it's lovely when people buy our paintings, but um, it's not even about that. It's just about showing the interest of even wanting to see what someone else has to say. So I'm truly grateful and I couldn't ask for more. Thank you guys. Oh, the projects? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah going on. I just cool. post. I just post paintings every day on my IG. So if you want to know what it is, you know, talk to me or whatever. But uh, <laughs> I do. I think the, the the way you can support artists obviously is pay them, but it's not the biggest thing. The main thing is like be a cool influence on their life and give them inspiration and good conversation, so then they can continue to like take from that and then do their thing. Mm -hmm. It's New really just normal life, and then you just <laughs> throw, it, throw it in there. Smash it. Um, so right now I'm going through really deep grief. So like I've just been kind of inward lately, so I've been journaling a lot. But eventually I just want to like put all my writing out there and um, continue my dad's legacy. Because I just discovered he was a good writer. Um, I didn't grow up with him, but um, I found all his writing in his apartment. And I was thinking about just continuing his legacy that way by just like, because he wasn't able to uh, be creative because he lived in the 80s Korea where you're not allowed to be creative um, and he was like bipolar anyway so I thought all this fucked up shit um, but I was thinking of just like being inward right now and it's okay to not create like outwardly if that makes sense so right now I'm just working on how to like be a person again how to participate so it's like really crazy for me right now being from all these eyes um, but but yeah I um, I'm always going to work on a series of drawings and like corporate more writing and for support, I mean, just everyone being here, like friends, strangers, um, like making work is isolating, at least for me, because you're hours just making line work and all this shit, and you spend a lot of time by yourself, and you know you go crazy when you do that. So it's always helpful when people show up. Don't tell artists, can you do this shit for me for free? You don't do that to your tattoo artist, you don't do that to the bartender. So don't do that to your friends, or like give me a discount unless they offer it. And um, that's the way you can support is just showing up and telling them that, that like, hey, I support you, like, I back you. It's a lot of rejection out there. Art is about rejection. Like, a lot of people will not support your shit unless you're like big and clout and whatever, fuck that shit. But like, so just show up, pay your artist, be there. Uh, I'm currently in between projects right now. I'm like in the process of starting my own company with some friends of mine. Um, I DJ, so if you ever want to come out to the show, I'm street chilly. Um, yeah, shit, shit's around. But yeah. Shit's around. 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 Sh
Yeah, this is definitely more than enough. Thanks to Cam. It sort of harkens to a larger, like, a very common trope of like, oh, well, you're like a model minority, so your experience is different. But it's you know, and it's it's not it's not the same as anybody else's, and every and even among us, we're different kinds of Asian, and not all of our our experiences are the same. Everybody's experience is different. But um, at the end of the day, I don't think it makes it more or less valid than anyone else's narrative and what they want to put out there and put into the world. So. It's definitely frustrating when someone tells you something like, yeah, you should make more literal work of addressing it. But it's also kind of vindicating to like, I mean, and then have a show like this and be able to say, well, this is an Asian art show and this is an Asian American art show and all my work is entirely about that. And it doesn't, <laughs> um, like you said, necessarily have to deal with literal imagery or anything, but the fact that we even are lucky enough to all have this platform to express our voices and our narratives and our what we want to share with you guys is amazing. So I mean, it it, it sucks to be asked that, but it, it it's not as it doesn't outweigh the good of everything we get from this. Yeah, I think it's ignorant when someone says that because it's like, how could you define my Asianness and and like, what does that even mean, like? Like, for you, it's like, oh, do I do the Lataria cards or yeah. some shit? Like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. what, I have to put more slanted eyes? Like, what does that <laughs> even mean, Asian? Yeah. I define that. Now, I speak for myself, but, like, I think it's just really annoying because it's like, they're just, it's like HBO and Netflix. They're trying to find a specific Asian person now. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. no, there's different kinds. How could, it, even Asia has, like, what? Hundreds of countries in it, like what? Well, not hundreds. That's ignorant. <laughs> uh, I think it now. No, but I mean that's the thing. It's like Jap, like even like within the Korean community, like like first gen, second gen, or when did you immigrate here? That's totally different. Like I can't speak for Koreans. All Koreans, I can speak for myself. And I think like when someone tries to speak for you and tries to like make you do a certain thing, that's like ignorant to me. Don't tell me like how I should be. Like that's weird. That's also like what a lot of like. How do you? I don't know if y'all heard this, but like you know, Insecure that show on HBO, yeah. Issa Rae, she like pitched the show, and they told her like, oh, we should make it about an Indian boy. Excuse me, like what? But that's like how it is with institutions and museums. Like it's too subtle for the museums to be like, I'm what I'm already doing is Asian. What I'm already doing is, but it's like too subtle for them. You want to be like, I'm Asian. I'm Asian. It's like no, I'm not gonna dance for you. No. I think one thing that goes for all of us is it's not about the sale. It's not about the money yeah. per se. I mean, it's nice and it helps support us and it helps support our artwork to create more. But it's we don't have to please everybody. No. We no. please the people who get want to understand what we're trying to convey. And that's what I appreciate about you is like you didn't come up to me like, hey Yuri, can you draw about like Korean masks? Like, can you draw all these like yeah. like K-pop? Can you do so? I'm like, oh my god, I would choke you. You said that to me, but you did it. And what I really appreciate about the show is like you just said, hey, make your work, say what you gotta say, make it you. And that's what I appreciate about you. Is like, yeah. I appreciate creators. all of you guys, as, yeah, your own individuals. And like, I really respect your art practices and, and what you guys all bring to the table is important. And that's why we're all here to help celebrate that. I mean, it happened so organically too. I didn't even realize it was <laughs> yeah. in all Asian art shows. 
Yeah. A bunch of friends. Yeah, exactly. It turned out. It didn't make me look up some like Korean stuff because it made me think about it. So, like, I don't think I know any like Korean art, you know, like, Korean artists. So it was like, it did kind of challenge me that way where I was like, you know, if I had people to be like, hey, draw me a dragon, you know, I'm like, it, I'm not born. So it's like, <laughs> like, like yeah. knowing how to draw a dragon. Toy fish, like, I, I'm just not really born to do that, you know, like, and it, it became this thing where I was like, all right, let me explore what that means. And it's like, especially like, you know, I, I love letter form. And so it made me kind of explore the idea of like, you know, if you go to Korea and you look at graffiti, they're not doing it in Korean. They're doing it in English. It's, it, it's all like English letters, you know? So it's interesting to think like even like Korean doing graffiti in Korea are doing American graffiti, you know, in, in that way. but. Koreans are doing it, so what is it, you know? And so it's like, <laughs> is it the person making it? Is it who's cooking in the kitchen? Is it who inspired it, you know? So, I don't know, I think for me, it's like, it's like anything, it's like, it, it's a challenge to, to explore it. And it helped me connect to, to certain things that I didn't know about, like Korean, like folk art, you know? And I was just like, all right. And I was like looking back and I was like looking at some of the stuff and I was like, whoa, like, they're painting on like, rice paper and it, it's a whole different category and, and like story and I was like all right this is kind of cool I hadn't seen a bunch of Korean people in painting you know so it's kind of cool to explore that and kind of see what it meant to be like an Asian American because it's definitely that first right it's not like I'm American Korean it's like I'm Korean American you know even on my paper right and so it's this thing that's first but it's not first of mine you know so when people say it it's might feel like I haven't thought of it that way, but it's like, oh yeah, I I look Korean, so it's like, all right, I, I should go learn a little more Korean art. So it, it kind of pushed me to like learn a bit, a little bit too, like that way. Yeah. And shouldn't we shouldn't we be enough? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, why should be more Asian? Like, if yeah. white people don't have to say anything, then why do we? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I mean that's the thing with like first generation and like even like native Koreans are like. I'm American to them, you know, if I go to yeah. Korea, it's like, yeah. you're yeah. Real, yeah. you know, and then I come back here and it's like, oh, you're Korean American. So it's like, there was always this like duality that you had to accept about your yeah. kind of personal identity that, you know, I don't like, I don't think we're born like, hey, that's this person, like whatever kind of environment you're brought up in to give you the lens to see the world, you know, and I think we've grown to kind of like broaden that scope. You know? kind of different actually like the painting that I did the ATM pride painting I wanted to memorialize that movement because I was part of that movement and it doesn't get enough representation in our world especially the ATM factor which is like more of like gangsterism like kind of rebelling against the traditional Asian American tropes so I felt like I want to represent this because I want to change the kind of like identity of what people think Asian is or Asian American is. So I wanted to be the voice of that. So I wasn't, I, I've had ideas like that where it's like, oh, this is kind of weird and like dragons and stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever, whatever that, that, you know, stereotype is, but it's like, I wanted to be like, this, this is a very powerful movement that no one talks about that in my brain needs to be painted. So that's why I brought it to that level where I'm like, here you go. This is me. I'm, this is the former me. This is what I still <laughs> like. But not to shy away from it, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I but there's, it's, it's, there's a dynamic. Yeah, yeah. It's complex. It's not just it's like, complex. Yeah. yeah, it's very yeah. complex. So no, I think it's super important to represent. I mean, because like we're all saying we're just people. Yeah. We're Asian, but the, our Asianness does not necessarily define. It does, and it doesn't, but it doesn't. Yeah. You can't just lump us. I mean, everybody, yeah. we're all very similar and different people, just like yeah. all of us are very similar and different people. But I think to Greg's point of sort of not only having Asian role models and um, uh, giving more spotlight to Asian people, I think um, sort of debunking and getting rid of some of the stereotypes that he was just mentioning, too, of. Um, Asians have to be in a certain way or like I think like for example that painting he did the Asian pride painting like 
and maybe this is something that's a little too specific to my own life and narrative, but I've encountered a ton throughout my lifetime, like, just looking the way I do and stuff, like, oh, well, you're Asian, but you're, like, very cool looking, and you have tattoos, yeah. and you have dyed hair, <laughs> and like, you're Asian, but it's, like, you're not, like, you're not like other Asians. But that could like, also be Asian, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, you're still like, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what is that is supposed that? to mean? Yeah. Like, what does that like, even mean? Yeah, it's such an important thing to try to get past and to and to harp on again what Greg said of like having these role models and but not in just like doctors and scientists and lawyers and you know we we're yeah. like everybody else. We don't want to just be doctors, scientists, and lawyers. We want to do art. We want to do whatever we want, and it's important for us to be represented in that way. And it's also important for us to. It's a weird double-edged sword because it's important enough for us to be represented that way, but it's also important for that kind of thing to not stick out as an Asian person if we don't just do, it sounds really stereotypical, silly, but math and science and stuff. And if we want to do other things, we shouldn't be looked at as, oh, well, that's like a very cool alternative thing to like a traditional Asian path. And it's just like, no, it's not. Any path is anybody's path. And that's hard for individual I can count my bills. <laughs> I can see it's a super, super loaded question by <laughs> itself. Sorry. Good question. Oh, yeah. I like yeah, it. It's it good. It's good. Um, panel discussion. But with that, I think I'm going to have Cameron say your closing remarks and then oh. we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, I guess sort of just repeating what I said earlier. Um, I really appreciate everyone that's here, everyone that um, you know listens to what we have to say. I uh, appreciate all the artists. Thank you guys for all showing your work, and you know, and showing your work is sometimes a vulnerable thing to do. Um, but I think it's important because we can have this kind of dialogue, and we can sort of. Uh, you know, explain how we feel through our paintings, but then also, you know, have moments like this where we can also try to articulate it as best we can. So I appreciate y'all for coming out. Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, we got snacks, we got beverages, we got art, we got prints, so yeah, check it all out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do a picture of me. Let's do a picture of me. Crystal, take a picture. No, no, no.